right, so this morning we're going to talk about Google tools for real estate agents. So primarily this is going to focus on Google-owned products, although there are a few at the end that I threw in that I really like that Google has had a hand in, but they don't fully own them yet. They just sort of help develop them, put money into them, and then they'll eventually own them. So this is Google Tools for Real Estate Agents. Now, how can Google Tools benefit your real estate business? This is kind of the overreaching theme of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to learn a little bit about Google. We're going to, we being me, will educate you about Google products and third-party products that work within them and answer any questions that you have. So what do you guys know about Google beyond the fact that they're a search engine? Anything? <laughs> yeah, so without realizing it, Google pretty much runs the world. So Google is 20 years old, and this actually surprised me. They were started in September of 98. Currently, they're valued over $800 billion, and they're the number three most valuable brand in the world. Do you guys know who the top two are? Amazon, Amazon. Amazon and Apple. So, and it's a very close number three. So Google and Apple are kind of within like $200 million of each other, which when you're talking about 800 billion is not much. In 1998, so this is kind of interesting and I actually read through the whole history of this. So in 1998, Google offered to sell to Yahoo for a million dollars. So the two owners wanted to go back to Stanford and finish their degree. So they said, you know what? Give me a million dollars and I'll give you Google. And Yahoo said, you're out of your mind. I don't want anything to do with it. Four years later, Yahoo offered to buy Google for $3 billion. And at this point, the owners of Google realized what they had, and they said, no, 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 it's going to take five. And Yahoo said, forget that. I'm not giving you $5 billion. Then in 2006, no, sorry, 2012, Microsoft offered to buy Yahoo for $400 billion, and Yahoo turned them down. Then in 2016, Yahoo ended up selling for $4.8 billion. So if Yahoo had the foresight to pick up Google for a million dollars, they would be bajillionaires. But it's just funny to watch how all these tech things in the late 90s and early 2000s just absolutely went crazy. Now, Google's been acquiring, on average, one company a week since 2010. They are literally buying up every startup, everything they can possibly get their hands on. And right now, I think they're up to like 187 or 189 companies that they own. Because they're so diverse, about eight or nine months ago, Google became a parent company called ABC.XYZ. So it's called Alphabet. And that way they have one overreaching company that owns the 200 other companies below them. So they had to reorganize because their stocks and things got so convoluted because they own so many businesses that they just created a new parent company. Now, 5.6 billion web searches a day are requested on Google. Now, what's interesting about this, and I've got this link up here. So let me come over and I'll show you. Yeah. Let's come over here. So right now, this is an up-to-the-minute analytics, and let me refresh it just to make sure. So we're only at about 9.30 in the morning, and there have already been 2.5 billion web searches on Google. This is real time. So this is how many Google searches are occurring every second. This is just staggering to look at. And I did this yesterday. It was at like 5.2 billion at eight o'clock last night. So this is really what they're doing every single day. Now the average person does four Google searches a day, every single day. Which is kind of interesting because when we think about even how this has changed the way we talk, when you want to know something, what do you say? Google it. You don't say go on the web and search it. You say Google it. You're not think, saying ask.com, you're not saying AOL.com, you're saying Google it. It has just become part of our everyday thought and our everyday speech. So this is kind of how Google is changing our world and it pretty much happens every single day. So now what can you use from Google to help with your business? 
The first and probably the most important is Google Chrome. So how many of you guys use Chrome as your web browser? If it's not your primary web browser, it absolutely should be. Um, Internet Explorer or Edge or whatever they're calling it today is just the worst web browser available. Google, because they're buying up all these companies, probably own the company that you're trying to use the software for. So as a result of this, Chrome is the fastest web browser almost by a factor of three. They're the number one used web browser on personal computers, and they're also one of the most secure. So they have the highest level of encryption because obviously Google is buying up the companies that are doing the encryption to make sure that their products are the safest. So Google Chrome, pretty much everything else we're gonna talk about today more or less hinges on Chrome. Now Chrome extensions, this is actually really helpful because Google has said, as we own these other companies and have these different tools, we're actually going to offer them as extensions to our browser. So instead of, you know, if you've got your phone, you have to download an app and it operates independently. There are actually extensions that plug right into the Chrome browser that allow it to work in a certain way. And we're gonna talk about a few of those. The other thing to point out is the extensions are found on the Chrome browser toolbar as icons. So I can show you guys this. Let's come over here. So if you notice up here, there we go. So if you notice up here, I've got all of these little icons. These are the Chrome plugins that come in. So I've got my VPN, my private network. I've got my antivirus. I've got Screencastify, which is what I'm using to record my screen right now. I've got Folio, which is interesting. We're going to talk about this a bit. And then Boomerang. So these are just some of the, the different tools that are out there that we're going to talk a little bit about. Next slide. So Google Drive. How many of you guys are using Google Drive? This is probably one of the best ways to keep and share information. So Google Drive, again, is fully encrypted. It's built into the Google database, but it has everything that your Microsoft Office suite has, your Word document, your PowerPoint, your Excel form, all of that is already built into the Google Drive. You can store your files in the cloud, so that way, heaven forbid, your laptop crashes, Everything is backed up, so you don't have to worry about that. And then it's accessible on any web-connected computer, tablet, or smartphone, and it updates in real time. So as you're doing something in Google Docs, it saves about every 15 seconds. So at worst, you know, how many of us remember back maybe in school or college where you type up a report and all of a sudden your computer crashes and then it's gone? A day is worth of work and research and everything is just gone. Here, at worst, you might lose a minute, maybe a minute and a half of information, assuming your computer completely, you know, you didn't realize it wasn't saving or whatever, but that's a lot better. Now, the Google Calendar. Are you guys using a Google Calendar? Yes. Okay. The Google Calendar has become more or less the center of my world. So, you guys might have an aneurysm if I show you this. This is my Google Calendar. So I have four different accounts that I keep monitoring my where I need to be for real estate, where I need to be for personal, you know, my daughter's school, all those different things are all different color codes. Now, what's great about the calendar is it's very simple to use. So you can go in if you have multiple email accounts, you can actually sort your calendar based on your email account. You can auto sync it. So let's say that I go in and I add something to my calendar on my computer, it automatically syncs to my phone, it syncs to my tablet, it syncs to the computer and it syncs to the cloud. So all of it is done again in real time. My wife and I have a couple of shared calendars and even as brokers, we have a shared calendar. So if Dan puts something on his calendar, it syncs up to my phone right away. So it just makes it really easy for us to be able to stay up on what's going on. The other thing that I really like is you can set up recurring events. So your client has a closing, set a reminder for next year to send a um, anniversary card. All of your birthdays, there's also a plugin for your Google Calendar where you can sync to your Facebook. So all of your Facebook birthdays syndicate to your Google Calendar. 
So I can go through for the month and see who has birthdays coming up, and then I can send out cards to my clients and things like that. You can send email invitations to others for attending meetings or events. So this is something we've started using at Florida Luxury pretty effectively, and Tina and I have used it half a dozen times, where I can actually create an event in my Google Calendar, and then I can add conferencing. And what that does is it sends a link to a Google Meet so that when I send it out, I can click on the meeting link, she can click on the meeting link, and then all of a sudden I can share my screen or she can share her screen. So it creates troubleshooting where you don't have to come to the office. I can do it sitting in my kitchen table, you can do it sitting in your pajamas. And we literally can just go in, yeah. As long as you don't share your camera, I don't care. Um, but with that, you know, we can talk right through the meeting, so we don't even have to be on the phone. We're just talking right through our speakers. I can turn my camera on if you want to see this face. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Um, or I can just show you my screen. So what it's doing is allowing us to troubleshoot much more easily rather than, hey, I'm on the road, but I can stop in 10 minutes, pull my computer out at a hotspot, and I can troubleshoot exactly what I need to do from wherever. I don't have to be sitting here in the office, and you don't have to drive in. So this is all integrated into the Google Calendar, which is pretty nice. I did that twice. So Gmail. Most everybody uses Gmail at this point. Again, this should become your preferred email service because it has the best spam filtering and the best virus protection of any free email service. Now, Google does have a paid email service, which actually takes it up to military level encryption. Um, for what we do, it's not necessarily vital. I mean, their free email service is totally fine, but if you want that extra level of nobody can see what's in your email, they do have a paid service that you could use as well. Now, some of the things that they have plugged in, so Boomerang is one of the ones that I use, uh, the Google Drive, Mighty Text, we're gonna talk about that. The Boomerang is interesting because what I can do is I can schedule my emails. So for example, I can type up an email, but I don't wanna send it right now. Using Boomerang, I can schedule when that email gets sent. So what it allows me to do is sit on a Sunday night and go, okay, I know I'm teaching on Monday morning, but I don't want this email to go out at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. I can schedule it for 8.30, 9 o'clock Monday morning, and that way it looks like when business is getting started, my emails are going out, even though I'm not anywhere near my email this morning. Um, the other thing with Boomerang is, let's say it's an email reminder about something that's coming up. I can set Boomerang to say, hey, make this disappear out of my email and then pop up as new mail a day or two before this actually happens. So let's say I'm reminding myself about an event in two weeks. Well, in two weeks, I'm gonna have 500 emails. So it's gonna be buried on page four. What I can do with Boomerang is say, hey, remind me two days before that happens, and it pops right back up as a new email. So it's great for not forgetting things that come through via email that you want to remember. Now, Virtru is a third-party plugin that enhances security encryption. Um, this is one that works really well in Google. And it's not one that I was overly familiar with. Scott actually just told me about this one. So it adds protection to your email, to you and the email recipient from possibly compromising information and reducing your vulnerability. Now, there have been times where title companies have emailed us wiring instructions and somebody intercepts that email, changes the information, and then we send it out which is why we've now, I say we, kind of the industry as a whole has said, do not take wiring instructions from any title company for any reason. It needs to go straight from them to your buyer. I don't want to even be included in the email because I don't want that liability. What this plugin does is basically creates a level of encryption so that you have some deniability to say no. I've got encryption in my email, it is much, much harder for my emails to get hacked. So it's just kind of a peace of mind type of program. Boomerang, like we were talking about, it allows you to schedule date and time, and then it notifies you at a set time if you did not receive a response to an email. That was the other thing I forgot. So you could send it with Boomerang, and let's say 
you email the list of properties to a buyer. And you want to know if in three days they haven't looked at that email. Boomerang will kick it back and go, hey, this buyer or this person never opened the email. So what it does is just creates it because again, in three days, I've already moved on to 47 other things. But this allows you to kind of remember or to notify you if something has not happened that you want. Discoverly is kind of interesting. So it's a Chrome extension that shares your social media accounts for every email you send. So for example, when you send an email, it has this piece up at the top that links to your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, your whatever, whatever. Some people love this, some people hate this. So it's just kind of personal preference. But it is nice that every email you send potentially brings people back to your website or back to your social media, not your website, but your social media. Um, so again, this is land from our uh, Beller Beach office. He's got his Facebook and his Instagram linked to this program. LinkedIn. Or LinkedIn. What did I say? Instagram? Yeah, LinkedIn. Thank well, you. Just add the buttons. Correct. So then when it comes in, all they have to do is click on the button and they can connect with you right away. This is another good thing when you're emailing to clients. You know, if you want them to follow your social media and find you on LinkedIn and things like that, it's just an easy way to be able to do that. Now, Google Voice. Every real estate agent around should have a Google Voice number. You should never, ever be putting your cell phone number on your real estate signs. Because what happens if you ever change your cell phone number? All your business cards, all your real estate signs, all your marketing, everything is linked to that number. Google Voice is a free telephone number. And in most cases, you can pick your Google Voice number. So mine is 999-4564. It's a super easy number, but what it also does is it creates a level of separation. So my cell phone number is not on every piece of marketing I have. It goes to my Google Voice number. Now, I can set up a voicemail the same way I would on my cell phone. And the other thing I like about this is our Google Voice goes to my phone and my wife's phone simultaneously. So if you guys work as a team or something like that, you can actually syndicate a Google Voice to ring everybody on your team at the same time. You can set it so that it would either show your Google Voice number, so you know somebody's calling through Google Voice, or you can set it to show their phone number. So I have it set to see their phone number so that I have it, but if you've got multiple things going on, you wanna know when it's your Google Voice, then you can grab it that way. And when you log into your Google Voice system, you'll be able to actually see the phone number that was calling. You can text through your Google Voice number. So if you have the Voice app, basically, you can go in and actually send text that look like it's coming right from your Google Voice. So there's a lot of really good things you can do with it, and it just works well and it's free. So Google Hangouts, so this is what I was talking about that integrates into your Google Calendar. So when you create conferencing, it basically uses the Google Hangouts program. So this is where you can voice conference, you can video conference, you can share files, so you can actually send it right through Hangouts, and you can do group conferencing. So when we do broker meetings, a lot of times we'll just all log into one Hangout, and it's got each of us in there. Now what happens is when one person starts talking, it moves them to the main screen. And then when they stop talking and someone else, it moves them over automatically. So it's a, a great product and a great program especially if you guys have out-of-state buyers. You know, how many times have we done a FaceTime where you're going through to show a house virtually? You can do the same thing. You can do it right from your cell phone and basically turn on conferencing. You can talk to them, walk them through the house, do anything you want right through Google Hangouts. So it is a really great product for that. Google Keep. Now, this one's kind of interesting in that this is kind of like your little post-it note system. So, you know, some people you walk in and they have post-it notes everywhere. Google Keep is kind of the same thing. So you can create to-do task lists, you can set up reminders, you can color code your list, and you can share your task list with others. So this is kind of the virtual honeydew list. My wife can go into Google Keep and then send it to me and go, here's your honeydew list. That kind of thing is great. Now, the other thing is you can just copy and paste things. It doesn't have to be formatted like a, a Word document where it has to be in nice lines. You can post this here, that there, 
and kind of keep everything in its own little area. And it's just a great way to keep thoughts together. You know, if I'm working on something, I can just jot a quick note, drop it into keep, and then I can go back to it and put it where I want it and things like that. So it works kind of like a, a post-it note. And then Mighty Text. So this is a Chrome extension that works with Android smartphones that allows you to send and receive text messages directly from Chrome. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also send from Gmail or Facebook as long as you're going through a Chrome browser. So the tool delivers text messages to the recipient's phone as if you sent it directly from your phone. So basically you can send text messages from your computer. Um, it's not on Apple, that's the, the caveat. And the reason for that is Google has owns Android. Android is a Google platform. So that's why iOS, the Apple system, is a, kind of a whole other monster and they hate Google with a passion. So a lot of the, the Google owned products are more difficult on Apple. But the recipient's phone can be Apple. Correct. You can't be the right, the initiator can't be on an Apple smartphone. Now, social media share. This one is similar to the other plugin, but this extension allows you to share any web page on your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Google Plus, which Google Plus is about to go away. It's a perfect solution to quickly sharing content. So let's say we are looking for content for our Facebook page. If you go to a website and you're like, oh, this would be a great post to put on Facebook, you can just click on this button. And what it does is it opens your Facebook with a link to that article, and then you can post it. So you don't have to copy and paste everything from the top and then post it in, whatever, whatever. You can do it with one button. So this is great. Let's say, you know, we have a single agent website, you know, which we're, Bill and I were talking about on Friday. We're working on having. What you could do is have that lead generation website where you could just click on Facebook and it shares it right to your Facebook. So it just takes a couple of steps out of the process, which works really well. And then Google Ad URL is a tool to request Google to include your website in the Google search engine. So as we all know, Google kind of runs the internet. So Google Ad URL, as we create single agent websites and things like that, or single listing websites for new pages, you can actually use this tool to request Google to include it into their search engine. So Google has all these different algorithms and they change constantly about what they're looking for to holistically get your listings up to the top of Google. This basically says if you're using the Google products, you can actually request this new website and using this product, it adds validity to that page so that they rank it higher in their Google search findings than they would a brand new page that nobody's ever gone to and things like that. So you kind of skip a few steps by going right to the source. Now, Google Takeout is kind of interesting because it creates a backup file of all of your data input that you've added to your Google services, like your calendar, your Gmail, your Drive, your Blogger, Contacts, YouTube, Photos, Voice, and more. So what it does is it backs everything up into one compressed file and then sends it to you. So again, let's say your computer crashes and you can't remember your Google login. You've got one zip file that you can put on an external hard drive or a thumb drive that would keep all of your Google information backed up. So it's just kind of a quick and easy, like heaven forbid Google ever crashed, which would never happen. but. In the event that it did, you would have a zip file of all of your information. It's also good if you're getting a new computer and you want to just pop everything over. You just put it on a thumb drive, pop it in, unzip it, and there it is. Now, Google Alerts. It's basically, you can save searches and then receive email notification of new search results. So, for example, let's set mortgage rates in Tampa. Anytime something pops up that uses that keyword, it's going to send you an alert saying, Google rates in Tampa have changed today. Or real estate market trends. Anytime there's a new thing that hits Google that uses real estate market trends in Tampa, Florida, it's gonna send you an alert and say, hey, here's a new result to what you were looking for. <clears throat> Again, real estate news, these are just some examples. 
So if you go to google.com forward slash alerts, you can actually set this alert program. Now, as I mentioned, Android is a smartphone operating system that was developed by Google. It has about 92 million users, and it's on 82.8% of the active smartphones worldwide. The other 17.2% are the iOS. So that gives you an idea. They have 83% of all the phones in the market. And that means Apple only has 17% market share, but they're still the number two company. It's pretty incredible. And it's got the world's largest number of available apps at 1.6 million. iPhone has 1.5. As of yesterday, I think, and or I think Google, I meant to update this, was up to like 1.9 million, and Android's at like 1.62. So they're actually widening the gap. And then Android provides the best integration with many of the Google products, again, because iPhone and Android don't play well together. Now, Polaris Office, this is kind of an interesting adaptation because, as you guys know, <clears throat> Microsoft Office is expensive. It's a program that you either pay a monthly subscription for or you pay through the nose to buy once and then you don't ever get updates. Polaris Office is actually a free product that you can use. So it works the same way as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but it's on your Android smartphone. So you can actually open Word documents right on your phone. And that's really nice because Microsoft still hasn't caught up. Even the Microsoft Office products don't work exceptionally well on your smartphone. So this is a good kind of workaround for that. <laughs> Bless you. <clears throat> Cam scanner. You can actually use your smartphone camera to take a picture of a document and then convert that right to a PDF. So how many times have we walked away from a closing, we've got our closing check, and we're sitting at the bank and go, crap, I forgot to scan this in before I send it to the office. Using Cam Scanner, you can take a picture of it and actually save it as a PDF, email it right to the admins, and they've got it. So it's really nice, and then it can be saved to your cloud storage as well. Sign Easy. So basically, this works like DigiSigner, but right on your phone. So DigiSigner doesn't really have a great cell phone integration for us to be able to do things like that. So Sign Easy works really well. Uh, again, saves in your cloud storage. Um, I have used this one not recently because with DigiSigner, I just log into my computer because I never far from my computer to sign things. But I've used it in the past, and it works. I mean. It's as easy as you'd expect it to be. Yeah. And then YouTube. You guys ever heard of YouTube? So it's a free video sharing website, although now it does have a subscription based where you can actually watch live TV right through YouTube. It won't be five years before nobody has cable anymore. But uh, so why is it good for agents? You can learn about and learn how to use any of the Google tools and third-party apps that I shared with you. If you just go onto YouTube and type in that product, you can get a full video tutorial on what all they do, how they work, things like that. It's great for sharing listing videos and even videos of yourself. So if you're doing an open house, shoot a YouTube video and do, you know, hey, this is Greg. I'm at 123 Main Street. I'm about to do an open house. Let me walk you through it. And then you basically pick your camera, turn the camera around, and walk through the house and basically do a virtual tour, but it's also branding you. <laughs> do I even want to know? That one back there, she's too much. She's too much. <laughs> it's her fault. It's all her fault. So <laughs> I'll go to the grave saying it's your fault. <laughs> I tend to agree. So it's not Google, but still essential. So the next few apps were either developed by or integrate into Google, but aren't fully owned by Google yet. These are great additional tools that you consider for a real estate agent. The first one is Waze. So for real estate, for navigation, if you ever drive anywhere, you should be using Waze. Google Maps, MapQuest, all of those are completely useless now. And Waze was actually developed by Google, and it has become the number one navigation application in the U.S., and it's expanding throughout Europe as well. Now, it's community-based, meaning that all of the users are able to indicate. So you're driving down, and all of a sudden there's a pothole in West Chase. You can actually go in and click on a button that says um, obstruction in the road, 
and then it clicks on it and it'll say something like car on the side of the road, pothole, you know, whatever, whatever. You click on it and then it pops that location right into it so that all the other users are able to see it. You can also note that there are police officers. So as you're driving down, you can say police officer and it'll say visible or hidden. So that way, like if they're hidden behind a sign and you don't see it, you can actually mark that. And then other agents or other people as they're driving by can click thumbs up, which just says, yep, they're still there. And then if the cop leaves and goes somewhere else and somebody clicks the thumb down button, then what that means is, nope, they're gone. And it takes that notification away. So these are usually up to kind of real time. They recently added a carpool feature. So if you were somewhere that you wanted to carpool with somebody, they've actually built this into ways. So you can choose to either be the driver and you know pick up. So it's kind of a free Uber system, basically, is what they're looking to do. And then they've also added the ability to list your real estate listings on the app through HomeSnap, and it's about 60 bucks a month. They used to have a free beta version of this, which I was super, super excited about. And now they figured out it works, so they're gonna charge you for it. And I'm gonna tell you about it in a minute. So using that, anybody that's using Waze that navigates near your listing, it pops up with a bubble that has all the information about your home for sale. So it's kind of a cool way to be able to get people in. And then HomeSnap. So it's similar to Zillow or others in that it's a home search site, but the difference is that it has some unique integration. So from the app, you can share homes you find and even chat with friends and family. So if I find a home, I send it to my wife, we can actually chat about it right through the HomeSnap app, which is kind of cool. And then in the paid pro version, you can do some other things like integrating with Waze. You can also do a farm area. So if you have an area that you wanna farm, you can go in, create a video of yourself, and then people in that home area, when they log in, they can actually watch your video that says, Hey, I'm Greg, I live here in Foxwood, and I'm your resident expert on the neighborhood. Well, every time they log into Waze, and this, you can have this video kind of pop up as soon as they click on it. Go ahead. Do you have to pay HomeSnap for that? Yep, so that's only in their pro version, which is about 60 bucks a month. So, you know, if you're looking for ways to advertise, it's a really good one. I mean, I can't even tell you how many users, and I meant to look it up, how many users are using Waze in our area, but it's, I'd say probably 80% of the drivers out there are now using Waze. So it's a good way to get in front of a lot of people at a relatively low cost. Now, the other cool thing is you can integrate your Google business profile into your HomeSnap Pro account. So basically, if you build a Google business account, which is another thing everybody should have, <clears throat> you can actually integrate that into HomeSnap. So if you get a review on your Google account, it'll pop into your HomeSnap. Uh, it just has a lot of cross integration. So there are some really cool things with it that just make it effective. Um, now for the fun part, what are your questions? Because I know there's gonna be quite a few about the different apps, different programs. The HomeSnap. Mm -hmm. Sure. So let me go over here and I'll actually just log in to HomeSnap and show you. Now we're up to 2.6 billion searches. So this is HomeSnap. So you can register. So if you have my agent, you can share homes, you can actually find agents. So if you're one of the HomeSnap Pro agents, people can actually find you using this system, which is kind of cool. Or I'm the real estate agent. Now here, what this does is HomeSnap powers real-time agents. Let me scroll down here. So you can get free leads from qualified prospects. It's free because you're paying for the pro version. You don't pay for the leads sec you know, secondarily like you do on Zillow. You can power your digital marketing with HomeSnap Pro ads. So this will go to Google, Facebook, your Waze, things like that. So for example, while somebody's navigating, this will actually pop up and say, hey, this house is for sale nearby. And while they're sitting at a red light, they can actually click and pop up your real estate ad. But that's an adjustment to raise they can turn off as well, right? Um, basically, what it'll do is it'll be a little bubble. 
So in ways, for example, if you drive by a McDonald's, it puts a McDonald's bubble there or Dunkin' Donuts or a few others. So it's a bubble and it basically pops up kind of as an alert that says, hey, this is something interesting. When you stop at a red light while you're driving, it doesn't allow you to pop those up. You have to kind of stop, which I guess is a good thing. And then the HomeSnap Pro. So basically they're rolling out all the new features again because as Google develops them, they're creating some other new cross promotions and things like that. And then what do people see when they Google you? Because it links to your Google business page, they can go into your HomeSnap and they can actually see your listings and things like that that are syndicated right through. So it just, again, cross promotion, keeping you at the forefront. And then you can learn about changes me so the home snap news feed it knows you have listings in certain areas or you drive in certain areas frequently so it will actually pop up with real estate related news that's pertinent to you and what you do you can schedule showings i'm not sure exactly how this one works it says it integrates with showing time and central showing which is kind of interesting because i'm not sure how they do that but apparently you can actually schedule your showings through showing time through HomeSnap. So yeah, you can do mobile CMAs. I mean, it really is for, let me see. Let's see what their pricing looks like. I'm curious now. I haven't looked at it in a little bit. I just, um, did they? Um, flashback photos. Yeah, it doesn't have the pricing up here. Um, but like I said, I'd looked into it. It was about 60 bucks a month. And now it's a premier Google partner. So again, Google doesn't own them, but they've partnered with Google. So it is effective. So I kind of answer your question. Well, so you can make the videos, but so somebody driving through the neighborhood or lives in the neighborhood. So now when they come home, they see your video pop up. Mm -hmm. and they know that you're living in the neighborhood as well. Correct. So your video can say whatever you want it to be. Um, let me go into you can also do the ads. You can say I want just wanted to go to Instagram or Facebook or I just want to go to ways and you can decide which one where you want it to go. And then if you need to pass a specific price point, but depending on your listing and how you want to handle it, advertise it for it. Um search problems on your phone. So yeah, it's uh it's pretty robust. And like I said, every time I've gone in here, so actually the uh the integration with showing time, that's a new thing. That apparently has popped up since the last time I logged in a week ago or a week and a half ago. Um they also have HomeSnap University. So this was kind of interesting too. They have basically a webinar and things like that where you can actually go in and do podcasts or tutorials and things like that specifically for the agent. And then if you have a team, they have different pricing basically to work for brokerages and teams. So it's kind of a, like I said, I mean, they just, they do a lot of really good things for a pretty cost effective price, um, just in all of the, the ways that you can promote. What else do you guys have? As big as we are, I will have to look and see. I haven't even looked at it from the, the brokerage side of things, but yeah. The bigger you are, the better. I would say, yeah. So it's definitely something we can look into. Mm -hmm. So let's here. Let's see if I've got my business page. So this is the Google My Business page. Oops, actually, well, one is over here. Uh, this is the Blogspot information about it. So creating a Google My Business listing, which works out really well. But if you go over here to the actual Google page, you can manage your business profile. Now I don't even know if I have mine set up properly. Um, Oh, it's probably because I'm not logged into my, let's see. Um, no. But you can go through basically and fill this part out. 
because I have one set up, so I don't want to create one on the uh, Florida Luxury page. But with this, you can go in, manage it, and what it does is, especially if you're trying to get customer loyalty and things like that, having people find you, creating your Google Business page goes in. Um, actually, it's going to how it works. So this is what I wanted to show you, actually. This is kind of how, I don't know if you guys can read that, but it shows you activity, how many people have come in and actually looked at your business page and different things like that. You can have your reviews. Everything is all set in one place. And then you can update it. So for example, you can change your photo. And I would recommend changing your photo about every three months, uh, especially on your Facebook business pages and things like that. Change your heading and your, unless your main photo is your logo, uh, change your cover banner <laughs> image at least every three months. Because otherwise, people start seeing the same thing and it loses the impact. So, and it refreshes in the Google algorithm and the Facebook algorithm that you've changed something. So then it gets it back in front of people because they think there's a reason that you've changed it. So we try and do ours at least four or five times a year. Um, you can start conversations. So in your Google business page, you can actually communicate with clients the same way you would through Facebook Messenger or anything else, which is kind of nice. And then you can answer your customers' quick questions quickly. So if there's a question that you guys get a lot, you can actually put answers on your Google profile. And what it does is further positions you as the expert in real estate. So they can go in and go, oh, well, they've got questions to eight out of the 10 questions or answers to eight of the 10 questions I was going to ask. They must know what they're doing. So it lends a sense of credibility to you. And then websites, posts, insights, it kind of integrates into all of that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the like I said, the Google business page is great. I have mine set up somewhere, but I'm not logged into it at the moment. What else? that helpful? Did you guys learn a lot? Was it overwhelming? Did I just throw entirely too much at you? Always. I see some like glossed over faces. So. Right.